What's up guys, today I'm breaking down my 7 days to die unkillable brawler build. This video is quite possibly my most requested tutorial after mentioning it in the 7 things you should use more guide. I'm sorry this video's taken so long, but it's here. And just a big disclaimer at the very beginning, this build is only unkillable if you don't play like a complete idiot. If you stand still with your screen turned off and get stomped, don't blame me. As the thumbnail says, 99% invincible. Anyway, remember to like the video and let's get started with the first thing we need to break down. The gear for the unkillable brawler build. So, for this build, the equipment is pretty simple. Wear the best heavy armour available. Light armour will also work, but if you want to play this build the way I designed, heavy armour does facilitate this playstyle much more comfortably than light armour because this playstyle is all about getting hit and shrugging it off immediately. For clothes, I'd recommend the good old fashioned BDU chest and legs for optimal temperature protection, along with the college jacket for its 10% speed boost, which for a heavy armour build is of course going to be massively helpful. For your eyes, nerdy glasses will give a 10% boost boost to XP, which is obviously very helpful. Alternatively, you can use the Fortitude Shades, which will save you 3 skill points later in the game, because this is a 10 Fortitude build. However, I think levelling 10% faster is more advantageous than saving those 3 skill points overall. A cigar is also a necessity for this build as soon as possible to save 2 or even 3 skill points depending on how you want to build this character. So now that you're built like an M1A2 Abrams, we need to get you some weapons. Naturally, as you would expect, the primary weapon of this build is going to be the best knuckle weapons you can find at any given moment. Ideally, you'll want those level 6 steel knuckles as soon as possible. In terms of weapon mods on this build, I'd highly recommend either the ergonomic grip for reduced stamina usage, or the fortifying grip for a little bit of extra health regen in those dangerous times where your health falls below 50%. I personally favour the ergonomic grip because I rarely fall under that 50% HP threshold to activate the fortifying grip's effects anyway. You'll also want to get your hands on a rad remover because this build does not do the most damage per hit. Instead, you'll be relying on a high DPS from multiple attacks, and a rad remover will stop those pesky radiated zombies out healing your DPS. Also, a weighted head mod will give you a chance to stun and slow enemies. Finally, a diamond tip blade mod will increase your durability massively. Steel knuckles are already very durable, however a diamond tip blade mod will cut down even more on repair kit usage. Now of course, this build isn't necessarily banned from using guns just because its primary weapon is knuckles, so if you want to use guns, my recommendation would be machine guns because this build, again, is primarily a fortitude build. I'd recommend using the M60 as soon as available for horde knights, but for more general use you might find the tactical assault rifle more appropriate. You absolutely don't need guns for this build at all, but having a reliable ranged weapon will make the build that much more unkillable of course, and obviously brawlers will struggle with those highly armoured opponents and vultures, so keeping an M60 with some AP ammo around is never a bad idea. Before someone says anything, yes, armour piercing ammo and the penetrator perk both do correctly function. I had a lot of comments on the 7 things you should use more video saying that I was wrong for suggesting it because they thought that the AP ammo didn't work because 8 months ago they saw someone test it and apparently the game doesn't receive any updates. That aside, now you all know armour penetrating ammo and the penetrator perk work perfectly fine as intended. You can also use the Desert Vulture, the SMG or the Auto Shotgun, because strength and agility are also going to be a highly advised part of this build. Now you know what gear to use, it's time to dive into the perks and skill books that make this build possible. I'm going to divide this section into four layers of perks. The first layer is going to be the perks that are absolutely needed for this build to work. The next layer will be perks I highly recommend to increase the power and fun of the playstyle. The next layer is going to be the perks that I think are a good addition that you should definitely get if you find yourself with spare skill points. And finally, I'm going to go over a few perks you may expect for this build that are actually detrimental or not particularly useful. Let's begin with those necessary perks. The first perks you'll want are the brawler and if you're using guns, the machine gunner. These are of course the perks that affect the damage of the primary weapons of the build, which makes them pretty necessary for long term success. Healing Factor and Iron Gut are also needed for this build to really work correctly. Some may criticise the Healing Factor perk as it is considered a noob trap perk, however I will be showing you how to use the Healing Factor perk correctly without destroying your character build, and I'll also explain why it's a trap perk for those that don't know why later in the video. Iron Gut is going to be needed to extend the duration of your consumables, particularly beer by 50% as this build will make extensive use of consumables. The last two necessary perks are Sexual Tyrannosaurus and Flurry of Blows. Sexual Tyrannosaurus keeps the build from running out of stamina which allows you to keep fighting for a longer time. Flurry of Blows increases the attack speed with clubs, 
brawling, knives and batons by 25%, which essentially increases the DPS of the build by about 25%. The stamina recharge bonus of the final rank will stack with the stamina recharge bonus of the sexual tyrannosaurus perk, allowing you to fight infinitely without running out of stamina, assuming you can get a few kills. Being able to fight infinitely with this build is what allows you to heal infinitely, which makes it unkillable, with the final and most vital part of this build, the Bar Brawling Skillbook series. Rank 1 will increase your brawling damage by 10%, Rank 2 adds the ability to do sprinting power attacks which can knock over opponents, Rank 3 increases your damage by 5% per kill up to 15% temporarily. Book 4 increases your damage against stunned opponents by 20%, and then the key in this series is number 5, a restore 1 health point for every enemy you hit. This book is pure free healing and is the foundation of this playstyle, more on that later. Number 6 increases your movement speed by 10% and attack speed by 20% after you take a hit. As I said, you need heavy armour because you are going to want to get hit with this playstyle to play it optimally. Number 7 is also a fantastic effect, removing the blur effect of beer, making beer much easier to use. The completion bonus of this book is called the Seventh Curse, increasing the damage of every seventh hit by 300%. The Seventh Curse is fantastic for dealing with high armour and high health enemies. That said, your M60 is going to be a lot better at that if you are choosing to use gun. So what about the perks I just highly recommend? Well my first recommendation would be living off the land. This makes farming much easier and as you will see later on, farming will be a significant part of this build's strategy. Along with that you'll want the Huntsman perk for extra rotten flesh and meat. Then once you have all the crops and meat you'll want for this build, it would be smart to get a few ranks of the Master Chef perk. Food will Will also be a big part of this playstyle, I'll explain this all later in the video. The heavy armour perk is also a good pick for this build because using less stamina and moving faster is always useful. Next we have the perks that I think are just a good idea to grab. We have Miner 69er, Mother Load and Parkour. These perks will be fully purchasable with the attribute distribution we'll be going for and are always beneficial. However, the perks you should avoid are anything outside of the Strength, Fortitude and Agility trees. You don't want to stretch this build any further. But there are also three perks I think you should avoid avoid even though they do fall under your perk distribution. Number one is going to be pain tolerance. To keep this video short, pain tolerance is incredibly misleading and doesn't work the way I imagine most of you think it does. Let's just say pain tolerance is a waste of five perk points for this build and move on. Also yes, I know I say perk weird, leave me alone. The next one is well insulated. Well insulated is an absolute waste for this build unless you plan on playing on an extreme temperature map. Iron Gut is generally better at what well insulated actually does for your character build, but it also has better effects, so just go for Iron Gut in this instance. And the last perk is of course Pack Mule. Don't. Just use the pocket mods. You don't have the excess points for it on this build unless you want to play out to level 300. I'd love to go in depth about why these perks are in general, but this isn't really the video to do it, it's probably already going to be too long. That was a lot of information, I'm sorry. Let's slow down and cover the playstyle of the build. Hopefully there's a lot less numbers involved. As I said earlier, you are going to want to do a lot of farming and hunting with this build. Food will be a big part of why you're so hard to kill. But what should you grow? Well, aloe, corn, potatoes, mushroom and hops are going to be great for this build. You'll want aloe for the first aid bandages, corn and potatoes for meat stew, meat stew of course being the food of choice for this build, mushrooms you should grow because they don't require farm plots so you might as well just grow them if you find them, and finally hops are crafted into beer, and beer is the primary consumable that this build will be abusing to decimate anything that looks at you funny. Beer is extremely useful for any brawling build because it gives you plus 40% stamina regen, plus 300% brawling damage, and a complete resistance to stuns which is another reason you won't be needing pain tolerance for this build. And yes, this food based playstyle is necessary for this character build because it relies so heavily on healing factor to be such an unstoppable force. Earlier in the video I did mention the healing factor perk can be a trap for new players, and this is why. The developers have done a very poor job of describing how the Healing Factor perk works. The perk description of Healing Factor makes it seem as though it gives you free healing. This is not the case. In reality, the skill essentially increases the rate at which you use your food to restore health points. And of course, the skill doesn't work when you're hungry. This leads to many new players taking the ability but never actually benefiting from the health regen because they cannot keep up with the food demand of the perk. Healing Factor requires infrastructure structure to sustain, 
When you have a food supply, it is easily one of the best perks in the game, but don't get it before you have that set up. As for your combat style, it's mostly intuitive. You walk up to the thing you want to kill, you punch the thing square in the mouth, and then it probably dies. If it doesn't get disintegrated, it will probably then punch you in the face. This will do barely any damage due to your heavy armour and substance abuse, and then you will punch it in the face again, which will restore most, if not all, of the health you lost. You should then repeat this process until the offender is a thin paste on the floor, which once achieved, will restore your stamina. Then you want to repeat this process on every living and unliving being in an 8km radius until you are the last thing standing. On a more detailed level though, I'd recommend using light attacks when you want to restore health and build up your 7th curse combo. And on the 7th hit, use your power attack to send the enemy into the sun. A 7th curse, brawler 5, 300% headshot damage, steel knuckled power attack whilst using beer is quite possibly the most devastating melee attack in 7 days to die. Now there's a couple of disclaimers I'd like to give out. This build can be frustrating on higher difficulties in the early game. The easiest way to avoid this issue of course is to just do a normal build and then use a forgetting elixir to transition into this build, switching out once you have enough skill books and perk points to make it work. But if you want to stick to that playstyle from the beginning, I would recommend skipping the leather knuckle wraps and using a wooden club or stone sledgehammer until you can find those iron knuckles. But feel free to just punch your way through the entire apocalypse, who am I to stop you? The cool thing about this build though is that most melee builds can easily transition into it. You will have to sacrifice some damage in the early game and hold off until you get those knuckles and not put any points into clubs or sledgehammers because every perk point is needed for this playstyle as it requires 10 fortitude, 6 strength with the cigar that makes 7, and either 7 or 8 agility depending on whether or not you want the parkour perk. I really struggled finding a balance of perks for this build, just getting the necessary perks requires about 51 perk points, and on this build getting all the recommended skills would need to be at least level 100. Some of you will just play until then anyway, but I know for a lot of you that playthrough might not last that long. Just have fun with it and consider this video as a comprehensive guide on building your very own variations of the unkillable brawler. The key to this build is that rank 5 of the bar brawling skill book and making sure you have enough consumables. Critical injuries are going to be your only threat with this build. Make sure to keep health bars to increase your critical resistance and critical healing, if you plan on taking on a horde knight without a horde base. Oh, and if you get a broken arm, just run away. That is the Achilles heel of this build. If you break your arm, you will attack slower and that will get you killed with this. That said though, this build doesn't even need a horde base once you level it up enough. Even on a day 7000 insane nightmare 64 spawns blood moon horde, all you have to do is make sure you have enough medicine and beer to heal the injuries and deal damage. With that, you should be able to spec your character to become almost unkillable. Like I said, 99% invincible. If you learned anything, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. You can of course follow me on Twitter at isprebuiltyt for updates, or join my Discord. We share news, tips, and chat about 7 days to die. All those things are of course linked in the description. You may want to check out this video popping up on the right to learn more about 7 days to die. Also, to my regular viewers, I've set up channel memberships. If you guys want to support the channel, get extra live streams, badges next to your names in the comments and live stream chats, emotes, and get your name next to these guys on the screen, you can join by pressing the join button below. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.